When Elon Musk announced that he was going to make rockets reusable, those experienced in the rocket industry laughed and gave him hundreds of very good reasons why it was impossible. Now that SpaceX has proven it is not only possible, but profitable, companies and nations around the world are trying to compete. Let's take a hard look at their plans so far. We have seen several companies and nations rise up to try to compete with SpaceX. Russia has announced the Amur rocket system, capable of putting up to 10.5 tons in the low Earth orbit which they hope to have flying by 2026. The Amur will have five RD-0169 engines on the first stage. The RD-0169 is methane-fueled and has a projected specific impulse of 321 seconds sea level and 356 seconds in vacuum, with a maximum thrust of 3,330 kilonewtons. More thrust than Raptor, but less efficient. The thrust a rocket engine can produce is dependent upon the mass flow rate and the exit velocity of the exhaust, which I sometimes call ejection velocity, but is most often called exhaust velocity. If we look at the data given us about the RD-0169, we know that force equals mass propellant flow times exhaust velocity. But if we run the math on these, we see that at a lower specific impulse, it takes a higher mass propellant flow to produce the same force. That is due to the much larger vacuum-optimized Bell engine and the lack of outside pressure in space. These engines are tested at sea level and then estimated for space until they fly there. Efficiency is almost always better in space, but remember that these are very different engines. The beauty of the Aerospike is that it is at its maximum efficiency at all pressures but we covered that in several lessons. The RD-0169 is based on the RD-0146. The RD-0146 was a hydrogen-fueled expander cycle rocket engine built and tested by the Chemical Automatics Design Bureau, thankfully abbreviated KBKHA. I sometimes get criticized for pronunciation. Rutherford versus Rutherford, or Energia versus Energia. I blame it on parallel dimensional variation, but actually, the pronunciation of this would be closer to Energia, but I'm sure that still doesn't sound quite right to my Russian friends. I'll do my best, and we always appreciate polite feedback. The RD-0169 is a methane-fueled variant of the RD-0146. Only hydrogen and methane fuel work in expander cycle engines. When heated, these liquids produce a high-pressure gas that can be used to power a turbo pump. Fuels like RP-1 do not. This is important as you don't have to waste propellant burning it in your turbo pump. In a pre-burner, if it goes on into the combustion chamber, like the Raptor engine, in a closed cycle, or in a gas generator, if you throw it overboard, in an open cycle, like the Merlin engine. Expander cycle engines can be open cycle, which gives more power, like the BE-3U that will power the New Glenn second stage, maybe, or closed cycle, which gives more efficiency, like the hydrogen-fueled RL-10 used on the Centaur upper stage. The Amur looks remarkably like the Falcon 9, just a lot smaller. If you want to know a lot about Soviet rocket engine design, the Everyday Astronaut has an excellent video on the entire family tree. Then Europeans jumped into the competition, and announced this. The Germans are working on this rocket. This is planned to be a first stage for a reusable rocket system called Callisto. This demonstrator will be 15 meters tall and 1 meter in diameter. It will fly to an altitude of 40 kilometers, then try to come back and land. The French have bigger plans. This is Maya. ESA hopes to have this flying by 2026 also. This is also a reusable rocket designed to compete with SpaceX. This rocket will use the Prometheus methane-fueled engine. The Prometheus is an open gas generator cycle, think Merlin, that is about 50% 3D printed and can produce 980 kilonewtons of thrust, less than half that of the Raptor, at 100 bar combustion chamber pressure, with a specific impulse of 360 seconds. The Prometheus engine was tested and will be used on the Themis demonstrator. Themis is a 30 meter tall, 3.5 meter diameter first stage. Using three Prometheus engines, it will have a total thrust of 2.94 meganewtons, or a little more than 294 tons. 
This will be used to develop landing capability. Think Grasshopper. If all goes well, the engines will then be used on the Maya rocket, a two-stage small to medium lift rocket system, so that Europe will have a reusable rocket to compete with the Falcon 9. In fact, the French economy minister, Bruno Le Maire, said for the first time, Europe will have access to a reusable launcher. In other words, we'll have our own SpaceX. We'll have our own Falcon 9. I have great respect for European innovation and engineering. A well-built BMW saved my life one time, when I beta-tested self-driving by falling asleep on a long trip about two decades ago. The car let me down, driving me straight off a cliff. I had been listening to Meatloaf, which had kept me awake, but I made the near-fatal mistake of switching to country music. The incredible engineering kept me from having any serious injuries, except to my pride and wallet. Never listen to smoke rings in the dark when you're sleepy and driving, by the way. Despite the amazing engineering of European companies, I think they and the Russians have a vision problem. Building a scale model of the Falcon 9 will not give you a SpaceX. Your goal is to do in five years what SpaceX did more than a decade ago? How is this innovative? How will this ensure competition into the future? Both the Amur and the Maya will give reusable small sat launch capability to Russia and Europe, respectively. But you'll be competing with Rocket Lab, and your designs are not keeping up. Rocket Lab has designed their system for 2050. You're designing yours for 2005. I extolled the virtues of the neutron rocket system from Rocket Lab because it is very forward thinking, with its innovative structural design and payload deployment system. It should be able to compete with SpaceX in the dedicated launch small sat market, where the most money is to be made right now. Russia and Europe are far behind Rocket Lab in this market, but you will not just be competing with Rocket Lab. You must still compete with the Falcon 9, a larger, more powerful rocket that was designed, again, way back in 2005. When it comes down to advancing humanity into space, the neutron is just too small and the Amur and Maya are even smaller. With designs like this, you cannot hope to compete with SpaceX. SpaceX is working on this. This is planned to be a reusable 100-ton to orbit rocket system. Many people love to spend their time hating Elon Musk and SpaceX. I'm not sure why this is. I hear him called a fraud when he has continually produced what he promised. A little later than planned, but so what? They may hate him because he is so rich, and he is rich. I might hate that I am not rich, but I will not hate him for being rich. He built what he has, and I respect that. Some of my friends will decry the inhumanity of income inequality, and I see their point. The American system today favors the oligarchs, but what should we do? Take up pitchforks and yell, onward comrades, let us kill Elon. For what? For successfully navigating a system that we as Americans had created before he got here? Nonsense. If you don't like the system, make modifications. But don't hate those who adapted to it. Except Bezos. You can hate Bezos. Not because he's rich, but because he dissed Captain Kirk while the captain was thanking him for the profound experience of spaceflight. And that brings us back to Starship. Starship is not planned to be a tourist rocket. It is planned to advance humanity into space. There are many who say that Starship will never be able to re-enter in one piece, that the landing system is just too complicated to ever work. Let's assume they are right. Assume that Starship can never come back from orbit. Assume that the booster can never come back to land. Let's take the already built super heavy booster. Let's take a Starship and strip off the wings and canards. Forget about heat tiles. The dry mass is now down to probably 90 tons. We add another 90 tons of payload and try to launch this thing right into orbit with a gross mass of 5,090 tons. We leave the launch pad. We burn every drop of the 3,400 tons of first stage propellant. Now we throw away the 180 ton empty first stage booster and burn the second stage vacuum optimized engines. This version would have no sea level raptors. We burn all of the 1,200 tons of propellant in the second stage producing 5.90 kilometers per second, giving us a little more than the 9.40 it takes to get to orbit. We now release the payload and let the 90 tons mass of the second stage fall back to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere over the Pacific Ocean. 
We have now placed 220 tons in the low Earth orbit. We just beat the Saturn V by over 50%. While this was not a reusable flight, so what? The Starship right now is cheaper to build than any other large rocket system on Earth. The Raptor engines are at least 50 times cheaper than the RS-25s. We can easily throw these away and still be profitable. To my friends in Europe, Russia, and elsewhere, building a scale model of the Falcon 9 at this point will not give you a SpaceX. Why would you hope to accomplish in 2025 what they designed in 2005? With designs like this, you cannot hope to compete with SpaceX. If you want to compete with SpaceX, you are going to have to think bigger. What would you have to do to compete with SpaceX? That will be the focus of the next few lessons. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And help us out at Patreon or the Academy Store if you can. We appreciate you. At Astro Proterra.